All right, welcome everyone. We are here with our special guest, Denome. How are you today? Ah, I'm very good. Thanks, thanks for inviting me here. Yeah, it's been a few months since we did our first part of our sand base walkthrough, and uh, we both thought it would be a good idea to revisit kind of how the markets are looking with all of the crazy action going on, and uh, you know, get your take as well as get into a few more parts of sand base that we didn't explore last time. And uh, we were talking a little bit before the call about things like dormant circulation, which we can get into in just a moment. Uh, I just briefly wanted to show our screener, as we talked about last time in our part one, uh, because it gives such a nice look at just how the past week has been, and it doesn't take a genius to realize that it's been quite a bloodbath here, uh, particularly for some of the meme coins. I know Pepe has had a tough time uh, with Dogecoin assets like that. Basically, the most speculative assets are the ones that are really getting flushed out right now. Um, have there been any assets that you've been keeping an eye on? Yeah, uh, well, for altcoins, there's a, there's a couple ones that I've been following and I, I do like a lot. Uh, one of them is LDO. Okay. Uh, that is for the liquid staking of Ethereum. It's the largest liquid staking, staking protocol. Right. And uh, since it's correlated with Ethereum, I feel like it's, it's quite undervalued and uh, there's a SEC court case with them at the moment so i just feel like it's way undervalued interesting yeah we could potentially look at lido um maybe through the metrics that we're about to look at for bitcoin and ethereum we could do a quick lido deep dive as well um but there are a few i mean xrp had a big run today uh jumping over 20 percent uh it's currently all the way up to 74 cents i think it's actually up more than 20 percent yeah, it's been it's up twenty point eight percent the past twenty four hours, but I think if you go to like past twelve hours, it's even closer to thirty. But it's been a big star. Um, but why don't we transition over to one of the metrics that you found most useful on sentiment thus far, and that is our dormant circulation metric. Uh, maybe yeah. you can tell me a little bit about why you see value in it and how you've been using it. So. When you just take a look at the dormant circulation, it's basically showing you uh, old money. What is old money doing? The people who have held Bitcoin for more than 365 days. Uh, so when you see a spike, it's basically old money moving Bitcoin. And usually uh, when you see that rising, you see that old money is basically exiting their positions or selling Bitcoin. And when you see that going down or gradually, you basically see that the sell pressure from old wallets is exhausting and that can potentially be a bottom but when you start to see like a huge spike that can be a potential top for bitcoin so as of now you can see at the end there there's a couple of uh, small spikes at the end but we're not seeing like a panic selling but we're not seeing a um like just before your cursor on the left you can see that the uh the the line was very low. So that's when I thought that, okay, we might see a bounce since the old money has basically stopped selling already, right about uh, Ju July 11. July 11th, right around here, okay. Yeah, so you, you saw right before the huge uh, sp uh, spike in, in, in price, you saw that the old money already stopped selling. Yeah, there wasn't much going on right here. Yeah, um, exactly. I wonder, have you checked out the other two uh, older money metrics that we have, that would be mean dollar invested age, as well as age consumed. So beginning with age consumed, here I'll just switch over to Ethereum because we were going to look at both anyways. So age consumed is calculated by taking the amount of coins being moved at any given time and multiplying them by the actual uh, age of those coins. So the older the coin is, the bigger the multiplier. Uh, and so when we have big spikes like this, let me just make it daily to make it easier. So these orange spikes here, they resemble when the dormant coins are being moved uh, at a very high rate. And it kind of works similarly to what you're saying with uh, 
each consumed, you can see how much they kind of align with each other. Yeah. I'll do this so you can see them better uh, coinciding with one another. So every time you see dormant circulation, there's usually a pretty big age consumed spike too. And it kind of works the way you've described. It's a very good bottom indicator, but it can also be a good top indicator. If anything, uh, I've kind of just viewed this metric as a directional indicate, uh, uh, change indicator. So when prices are going up and you see the, the big spike come in, you're much more likely to see reversal. If prices are dipping and you see a big age consumed spike, as we have for three days in a row between the 4th and the 6th, that's a good sign that we might be bottoming out. So, yeah, go ahead. That, that, that's actually what I wanted to talk about is that now we see a difference between Ethereum and Bitcoin. So uh, with Ethereum, you can see a lot of old money selling right now. Mm -hmm. Whereas on B, uh, Bitcoin, we do not see that kind of huge spike. Right. Right at the end. Yeah, for comparison, we'll, we'll just hide these again. So here yeah. they are right next to each other. Bitcoin here not getting much uh, dormant circulation at all right now while Ethereum is. So yes, that's a, a very good point and a, a sign that perhaps Ethereum could have a midterm advantage over Bitcoin, assuming prices steady out. Uh, or, or there may be a, like a lar larger pullback on Ethereum quite soon if old money is deciding to sell here. Right. Yeah, also a very good point. Very useful. Absolutely. And uh, we talked, I think, briefly about one of my favorite metrics, which is just the supply distribution tier. But on this video, we can kind of quickly go over some of the whale metrics and the value that Santiment sees in them. Uh, this bright green line, for those who watch a lot of our videos, they're already well familiar with it. It's the 10 plus BTC wallets. And this is kind of a big controller of, of crypto in general, uh, in my opinion. It's one of the leader, leaders in alpha right now, and a lot of it uh, depends on the 10 plus BTC wallets just continuing to accumulate over time. You can see that over the past three months, they've mostly done that, even though prices have been ebbing and flowing. Well, this is more of a long-term indicator, so you're not going to see you know, whales dump and then immediately see a dump and then they rise and prices immediately rise. It's more of just a zoomed out perspective. So if I go to the past year and I'll unhook the uh, manual axis here that I had so it all fits on the screen. So you can see it's pretty much constantly going up in these long periods where it's actually going slightly down or flat that's when prices are very suppressed. Uh, but as soon as it takes off, like especially right here, if you were watching right around the beginning of the year when they were accumulating really big but prices were going down, that's a pretty strong bullish divergence that you could have used as a great signal to buy a whole lot of Bitcoin uh, right here or other altcoins because obviously the price of Bitcoin doing this meant that uh, you know, a lot of meme coins did this and crazy, crazy action out there. So um, I like to look at supply distribution no matter what asset uh, we're checking out. Now with Lido, I don't think we have full, actually, let's check. If we go to, we'll just unmerge all of these. Yeah, we do actually. So Lido's price is sitting at just north of a dollar, about a dollar and six cents right now. Uh, that would mean that sharks and whales kind of begin in these three tiers. And then if you go anything beyond that, 10 million or more coins, that's when you start to get into exchange wallets that don't always represent the true behavior of like real humans and what mm -hmm. they believe in terms of, of Lido. Um, make sure to unlock that so we have Lido's price. You can see how much Lido has fallen off a cliff, represented by these green bars here. Uh, since February 25th, yeah, its price has gone down 71%. So I see what you mean about the undervaluation. Assuming you believe in this asset, uh, this is one of the larger drops in, uh, in among the top 100 market caps at least. But if we look at the tiers here, 
Look how much the 10K to 100K wallets are growing. That's a great sign since April 10th, so give or take just about four months ago, they've added about 17.7% .7 more coins to their wallets. On the 100K to million coin side, they've also added about 5% to their wallets. And then the very largest of the whales that may or may not actually have um, you know, these non-exchange wallets that they control, the blue line's gone down a little bit. Um, so two out of three is looking good. The largest one, not quite so much. To simplify, we can always just do this. Um, if I click merge, and I'm just gonna say, let's, let's combine all of the wallets that hold 10,000 or more Lido right now. And they're actually going down. Um, I wonder if this is because it's a very centralized asset. Do, do you happen to know any more backstory behind how the supply is circulated? Yeah, so if you actually add in the uh, the total no amount of holders of LDO token, you can see that there's a steady rise in actual number of holders. Great point. Let's so, check so, out the number of assets. So I think there's like a distribution of the uh, the coin into smaller wallets. Okay, so if we just look at the number of wallets that hold 10,000 or more, let's see if it shows a different picture here. Much different picture. So yeah, that's a great point. Uh, over the past four months, they were holding 1283 back then and 1429 now. So about 11.4% more compared to back then. That's a pretty strong sign. Yeah, so I do see at the same time we see, see uh, accumulation. Uh, we see more holders of LDO token and we see price basically being in the gutter. Right. While, like, if I take a look at fundamentally and research what LDO does, I feel like it's undervalued. But I don't want to shout it too much because uh, usually when I find an undervalued coin, it can stay undervalued for a long time. And I can even lose money on those uh, simply for the fact that other people don't see the value as I do. I totally get it. Yeah, it's it sometimes. Uh... You have to be a contrarian a little bit in crypto, and when you believe a coin is undervalued, it's usually because everyone else is laughing at it or they're they're writing it off. Um, so yeah. it's a tough tough thing for people to believe uh, when someone says a coin is undervalued because usually those are the ones that have lost traders the most money money and they have a negative bias toward it. Exactly. Yeah, um, we can use Lido as an as an example for this as well. This is another way to analyze whales where you can do supply held by top exchange addresses and supply held by top non-exchange addresses. And on top of that, if you highlight, let me full screen this, and I'll make these into candles so it's a little easier to see. So if I were to, let's make this a different color than red, let's just go with blue. If I were to click on this, right now, right here, it says top holders uh, 10, meaning this blue line is representing the 10 largest exchange addresses on the Lido Down network. How about I change that to 100 so we get a bit more of a sample size? And it actually doesn't change at all. Uh, the top 100 exchange addresses have been going through the roof going back to pretty much the beginning of the year. So this was exactly seven months ago and the top 100 exchange addresses have jumped 170% in terms of the supply held. So that says something. If we do the same with this one, you see how it defaults to 10 again. I'm just gonna hit an extra zero and hit enter. And they're going in the opposite direction. So clearly the whales are flip-flopping right here. That isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, ideally, we'd like to see the non-exchange addresses go up a little bit more, but obviously with prices going down the way they have, uh, one explanation might be the fact that the largest cold wallets out there have been uh, lessening, lessening their supply over time. All right. All right. I'm trying to understand the, the data here. I haven't used this before. I have to take a look at uh, closer what this No, what of this course. Uh, it, it's based, and I'd be happy to talk more about it offline with you, but really it's as simple as 
you're you're combining the largest 100 uh, on an exchange aspect versus a non-exchange aspect to see how their combined total holdings are behaving. Now this isn't necessarily alpha the way the supply distribution is because we just looked at the number of wallets and how much they've been growing among whales. Uh, but I do think when it comes to like just overall supply and exchanges, which I would presume has gone way up based on this chart. Yeah, it has. So because of these top 100 non-exchange or top exchange whales getting richer and richer, the supply and exchange overall was getting higher and higher. Uh, but at least over the past two months, it's starting to come back down, which would be a good sign. Yeah. So that's just, yeah. we're using Lido as an example. We're not trying to do a deep dive on Lido's price, but uh, I'm just trying to give a concrete explanation as to how these whale metrics can be useful no matter what as asset you're looking at. Definitely. Uh, I will personally uh, use sentiment and, and play with these uh, numbers to basically see if I can find a, like a reliable signal. Like, for example, on the red line right now, you can see it spiked, but the price continued to go down. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the uh, the supply on exchanges has continued to go down as well. So I wonder if that could be a signal that I can use for my own uh, trading as yeah, it's, like a indicator sure. that maybe that most of the sell pressure is gone, and now people are accumulating the asset out of exchanges back to their wallets. Yeah, and it can be so tricky with uh, almost every altcoin out there being uh, at the whim of where Bitcoin goes. And obviously with Bitcoin, you know, collapsing the way it has, uh, collapsing may, may be a little bit strong of a word, but retracing, uh, of course, it's going to drag down a lot of altcoins with it. And I think that's happening here. Yeah. So I also wanted to leave room for us to talk about uh, the combine feature, which you may not know about yet to know. So this is a really cool feature where we can actually create new metrics that aren't available by combining existing metrics. In this case, what I did is I took the positive sentiment versus the negative sentiment and I just uh, converted it to a ratio. So to walk you through how I did it, I'm just going to put in positive sentiment. And instead of clicking the chart right away, see how it says combine down here? I'm going to click that. I'm going to go, um, so positive and then negative. And now we've got two metrics represented by X1 for positive and X2 for negative. Uh, and I'm just going to say, let's take the positive and divide it by the negative. And I'll just call this simply positive sentiment divided by negative sentiment and I'm going to hit combine you can notice it even gives you a preview of how your chart is going to look so now we get this big chart I'll just hide the original one I had we get this big chart that looks quite noisy but if I back it out to let's say 12 hours and I'll put the price on it too We can actually see moments where the crowd got very greedy, such as I'll, I'll mark it with a um, I'll mark it with a rocket ship here, just so you can see where it's happening. So this is where people are getting very greedy because you can see how there's way more positive commentary than negative. Yeah, yeah. And then this is another one. Oops. right here and there's even one right oops, right here as well so these three points um, all preceded an eventual retrace this one happened immediately um, this was a couple months after the all-time high this one happened after a big retrace where the crowd said oh it's time to buy the dip and then after they got their hopes up a little bit it dropped. And by the way, when it did drop, we see a point of fear. Now when this gets really low, that in this case, if you look at the top left of my screen while I'm hovering, 
it says 0.79 is the ratio. That means there's actually more negative commentary than there is positive, which is pretty rare because people tend to lean bullish in crypto. Otherwise, they don't really have much interest in talking about it, at least the majority of people. So when you see these, these are good signs that a bottom is forming. And you can see how precisely the sentiment got right here on the 4th of July, right after this big drop of about 20% in Bitcoin's price. And all of a sudden we, we take off and have an amazing uh, July until it retraces at the very end of it. And then the other one, of course, would be right here, where you also see another big negative sentiment spike. And what do you know? Right when that happens, Bitcoin starts to bounce again and takes all of crypto with it. So I, I really like this kind of metric, and I made it just by combining two metrics. And you could do this for all sorts of different stuff and be creative. What do you think uh, about that? Uh, definitely useful. And uh, in my head, I'm just uh, imagining if I combine this data with, let's say, uh, Bitcoin wallets that have less than one Bitcoin inside them, uh, basically how how much of the Bitcoin supply are held by those wallets to kind of see also uh, what the retail investors are basically doing as well, not only what they think, but right. what they are doing with their Bitcoin. I wonder if it would coincide with this, uh, this metric. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's also another recent one, speaking of what you just mentioned, um, total amount of holders right here. I'll just yeah. add it. Have you checked this one out before? Yeah, I, I do like to use this. Yeah, it's kind of a, a good way of seeing how the crowd is believing in Bitcoin or another asset at any given time. And when they get really greedy, that's when prices tend to top off. When these wallets start to liquidate, we actually start to eventually get rebounds. I know there's this is the best example. Um, but you can notice right now, lots of liquidations happening. We started to flatten out right at the end of July when prices started to fall off, and then they're going down again. That's a sign of fear, which is usually a sign that we've gotten close to a bottom or we already have bottomed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Now, the last thing I wanted to show um, for those who don't know, we have Sandsheets models. Uh, this one was built by me personally. I, I love this thing. I check on it all the time. Um, and all of these little squares are representing each of the past seven days and whether there was a uh, hotter or colder than usual uh, day for that particular metric. So for example, if, let's just focus on Ave, which has been one of the hotter assets uh, over the last couple days. We have four different prices right here. This is the one day change where it's up 5%, seven day change where it's down 12%, uh, 30 day change where it's up 21% and 90 day change where it's up 23%. And then you can see these red squares here. In fact, all week long, this has been very red in these columns. They're representing the Ave active addresses, network growth, and whale transactions. Um, when you combine how hot or cold each of these metrics are, it'll actually label the asset's color by how hot or cold the network is. Uh, and in short, when you see that a network is really hot, that works as a big, reliable direction change indicator. You can see XRP down here uh, right before it took off. It was getting a lot of hot network activity. And now that it's risen and it's up 42% now in the past 30 days, despite this big crypto retrace, uh, which is why it's green, by the way, all the colors of the prices are compared to one another to show you which ones are the biggest gainers and fallers. So this is indicating that it's still getting a lot of network activity because people are FOMOing in, which likely means that we might have hit a top because yesterday we were kind of at a bottom with it. Today we're at a top and the network activity is, is still exploding right now. Um, it's one of my favorite models. This is one of maybe a dozen 
that Santiment has. Uh, obviously, we're not going to go through all of them. But uh, the other thing you can do in case you don't want to squint at a bunch of bright colors is just look at the leaderboard and see, okay, which assets out there are seeing the biggest days of active addresses compared to its usual um, amount of active addresses? Well, Illuvium, which many of you may not have thought about for a long time or even have heard of, it's seeing the largest day in the past three months at least for active addresses and network growth. That's why it has a one next to it because this past day was the top one most active day for active addresses and network growth. You can get really into the weeds with this. Whale transactions, compound and request. Um, XRP obviously is seeing a huge social dominance spike uh, because it had such a huge surge today. Um, and then you can even see just overall, what are the hottest ones? Right now it's status, Wi-Fi, XRP, request, Gitcoin, Aave, so on and so forth. And then you can even see the ones that are getting the least activity. And when you see ones that are getting very little, that means that uh, you're more likely to just continue to see flat or slight downward action toward the asset. So think of this not as like, Everything up here is bullish and everything down here is bearish. Think of it as these are the ones most likely to switch directions depending on how their price movements are going. And these are the ones that are likely not going to do anything exciting or, or any major changes related to what their price action has already been. So it's one of my favorite models and I'd love to tell you more about it uh, on another, another uh, call we have. Uh, my question for this is, uh, how, how do we access this? Yeah, great question. So we have links on our uh, Santiment Academy. I'll actually include this one on the video that you guys are watching right now, and you can check it out for yourself. Uh, there's simple instructions where you just make a copy of this. You're not accessing the direct spreadsheet. So when you see the link you just open it up and you go to file make a copy and from there you can just plug in your own sentiment uh, code that is in your sandbase subscription um, which you can access just by going right here and go to account settings and it's going to be api there it is so your API key is going to be right here, and you'll be able to see exactly what your code is. This is not uh, a code that you can use because it's longer than this, but you'll see one yourself and be able to plug that in and use it to uh, access the same data that I just showed. Perfect. So there's tons of other models. Maybe for part three we can look at a few other ones, but uh, yeah, that's kind of just a, a recap of what sentiments all about uh, if you do like what we're showing and want to learn more feel free to let us know in the comments what we can expand upon and of course check out our pricing page you can all start right here under the free uh, version of our subscription where you get two weeks to just explore get all the access to everything full real-time metrics and then if you like it you can become a sandbase pro or a sandbase max member but um, that's about it on my end, Denome. How's, how's everything for you? And what are you looking for uh, in the markets over the next week? Uh, well, thanks for showing me things, these things today because uh, I wasn't using most of the features myself that you just showed me. But uh, for the next week, uh, I have to say I'm a little bit 50-50 at the moment. Uh, uh, I did see on, the, on, just on, the, on a technical analysis point of view uh 59k on bitcoin is going to be a critical point of decision making if we go upwards or we go and actually just head lower but at the same time i do see a lot of accumulation on bitcoin so it's, it's quite hard to say uh quite hard to say after 59k on bitcoin i think i will be flipping bullish but now i'm on like 50 50. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. It's a very tough situation once you see a huge drop and then a, a mild rebound. Uh, it's In the long term, it still looks pretty good, in my opinion. 
for the yeah. rest of 2024. But uh, things can can be pretty dicey over the next couple of weeks. So obviously, uh, I think we both can agree that those watching right now should proceed with caution. Uh, definitely, yeah. There's a lot of volatility and that we just cannot predict wars, maybe some banks. And during these times, people's imaginations go wild. So they can come up with the craziest ideas why Bitcoin will go to zero. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Well said. All right, my friend. Well, thank you so much for joining. And uh, for everyone watching, thank you for giving us a watch and hitting that like bun button for us. It means a lot. And uh, we will talk to you next time. I look forward to part three with you, Dino. Uh, thank you. See you on the next time. See you next time.